everybody to another Business Building CPD Masterclass with the IAPCNM. For those of you who have come to part two and thought that's not our usual host, I'm Dawn Campbell. I'm one of the business directors at the IAPCNM. Julie will be back with you next week, but she's just had a, a, a techie glitch, treated herself to a new laptop and she's in the laptop shop still having everything transferred and she's pulling her hair out and I said, just chill, it's fine. I will step in. I know Michael from years ago and he will be fine with it. And it's lovely to see lots of familiar faces. So welcome, Michael um, Churest, for joining us again. Hi. This is a, a part two. Uh, so those of you who haven't met Michael before, he's um, in East, uh, the East Coast of the USA. And part one I love the titles of your marketing, uh, your masterclasses. Marketing is not a dirty word. So if you miss that, you can pick it up on the the, uh, the IAP CNM blog. And today we're looking at the sales process in an ethical and dignified way. So Michael is the founder of Biz Life 360. And something I've just found out that I didn't know, but I think this is a fantastic idea, is he's creating a new business helping clients create their bucket list while they're alive. What's the point of leaving it till you're on your deathbed? What cool idea is that? So uh, we we'll look forward to hearing more about that in due course. But I don't want to take up any more of uh, Michael's precious 45 minutes plus Q&A time. So over to you, Michael, please. Awesome. Thank you so much. You rock, Julie, for being able to just jump right in at the last minute. And what a great introduction. You're doing beautifully. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. As Julie mentioned, uh, a month or so ago, I presented on the fact that marketing is not a dirty word. And today is a nice segue uh, or follow up to that. However, if you're watching this first or you didn't see the other one, then um, no problem. This will, this will help you in and of itself. And to the extent you have seen that or can go back to that, it's a nice one-two combination because we market, put ourselves out there and to uh, be known or to build our credibility, et cetera. And then we follow people to the sales process. So um, let me just start off by sharing a little, uh, where am I here? Click on this then. The fact that I think sales, mastering the sales process may have the single big biggest impact on your business. So much matters to the success of our business, marketing, sales, time management, taking action, getting our prices in order, our target market, our niche, et cetera, et cetera. And I think sales can have potentially the biggest impact. And I just thought I'd share a little story about Fred and Sally to show you how and why it has the biggest impact. So imagine both Fred and Sally secure six consultations a month. And by the way, I'm just using the term consultations, or I might say complimentary consultations. They're, they're the quote sales conversations. Some people call them meaningful conversations, but it's basically you do some marketing, Somebody says, gee, I might be interested in learning more. And then you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them to see if they want to hire you to, to be your coach. So imagine both Fred and Sally average six consultations a month. I could have picked any number, but six is a nice, a nice number that, that I used to re really strive for. When I, when I started my business, I would say, if I could or if I could just secure six complimentary consultations per month, I knew by some calculations that that would uh, allow me to hit a goal of six figures plus, like in the $150,000 to $180,000 a year number, which is my goal at the time. So anyway, if you do six consultations a month, that's 72 consultations per year. And let's assume that eat both Fred and Sally are secure, are averaging $5,000 in revenue per client, right? Say for example, um, a, a typical client hires you what at, uh, uh, let's see, what would five, let's say 5,000 divided by six, what would that be? 5,000 divided by six, 
let's just say, for example, Fred and Sally both charge $833 per month, and the average client stays with them for six months, and that would equate to 5,000 in revenue. You could easily also say each, each, both Fred and Sally average clients staying with them for a year, but they charge half of that, $415 a month or so. And that would average about five grand per, per, uh, per client in revenue. But the point I wanna make is if Fred secures 30% of those consultations become clients, and Sally has a conversion rate of 55%, Sally earns $90,000 more per year. And the point I wanna make is for no, not one uh, more moment of marketing work or effort than it took for Fred. So all the work is in procuring consultations. We take, we take action in marketing. We might do speaking, we might do networking, we might do strategic alliances. We might write an easy, and once in a while, we make an offer. Hey, would you like a complimentary consultation to see if I might be a good coach for you to work with? And all, both Fred and Sally do all that work. That's what takes all the time. So the better you get at managing the sales conversation, uh, the better the, that, that money equals profitability. So there's no reason not to make this a priority priority and focus on it. Now I'm gonna just come off screen share for a minute. And most coaches find sales. In fact, let me just ask you, what words come to mind when you think of sales? Not, not in a, mostly in, in a positive light. Most people think of it in a negative light. Any particular word come to mind for you? Oh, I often, yeah, go ahead, Sarah. Uh, myself, I just I, I work um, in a non-profit making um, work, and so I, I'm not actually in sales, and I, I'm going to find it very hard um, to put a price on my work because I don't know my value. Yeah. So if you don't know your so in Sarah, perfect example. I find it. I'm, I'm paraphrasing what she said. She finds it hard to put a dollar value on her, her services because she doesn't know her value. So in this case, and you know, Sarah's not alone. Is Sarah gonna feel confident going out and wanting to procure consultations? Probably not, right? So you wanna get clear. And Sarah, you just brought up, we wanna get clear on our pricing, on our target market, on what, you know, what yeah. services we deliver for that price, et cetera. Most people view sales as some of the words that, in fact, if anybody has heard of Dan Pointer, a prolific, prolific writer and a, and a sales trainer, he interviewed 5,000 Americans and he asked them, share the first word that comes to your mind when you think of the word sales, okay? And it was something like, 90% of the words were negative and they kept repeating the same words over and over. And the top five words, if I can remember them, were dirty, sleazy, salesy, manipulative, and forgot what the fourth one was, but you get cheesy. that it's not a very positive thing. Say that again. Cheesy. Cheesy could have been, right? But we get the point, right? People don't like sales and it just doesn't have to be that way. It can be a wonderful, meaningful conversation, especially I think as coaches, I think coaches can make the best salespeople. So how is it that, that we got one end of the extreme where people are thinking of sales as dirty and sleazy and cheap and gross to, to this presentation, which I'm saying, are you kidding? It's a beautiful thing sales is. Can anybody just imagine why that is? What what can make sales so incredible for coaches? I don't see it as dirty and sleazy, but I just see it, uh, I haven't stepped into that pool yet. <laughs> Say it again, Sarah, you don't see it as sleazy I, or salesy? I, I, don't see, I don't see it as sleazy or anything, because I, I recognize a good salesperson. But I haven't stepped into that pool myself yet. So um, and what, once I find my value of um, and, and what people charge, then uh, I'll probably get over it in, in about one or two years, you know. Yeah. 
Do me a favor, Sarah. Um, yeah. My email, my email is on the last slide, but it's Michael. It's Michael at BizLife three hundred and sixty. Feel free to send me an email, just reminding me I'm the one that has trouble with my pricing. And if you want to just share with me a little bit about your pricing in that email, I'm happy to respond and just give you some some pointers and or one of the modules we have in our course is how to price, how to price okay. and, and position your services. Okay, so let's move on to this, this and why sales can be so such a wonderful thing. I, I consider a complimentary consultation, i.e. the one-on-one -on -one sales conversation to be four things. And I think it's important to be aware of this and moreover to let our prospects know what a consultation is. I think one of the reasons we find sales so manipulative or dirty, if you guys have heard the term bait and switch, we, we say things like, would you like to have a complimentary consultation? Or I'm sorry, take that back. Would you like to have a free coaching session? No obligation, I just want you to experience coaching, right? And we know internally, and typically the prospect knows internally, that, yeah, we're not going to try to hard sell them on anything, but we want them to buy from us, as opposed to just being honest and say, would you like to register? Would you, can, I, can I give you a complimentary consultation? And the prospect may say, what is it? And you say, well, it's basically four things. Number one, it's a mutual interview. Okay, You're interviewing me to see if, if I could be of service to you as your coach. And I'm interviewing you, so to speak, to see if you might be a client that I can help. Okay, And you can see here, you can word it as it's a mutual interview. It's an experience or the opportunity for the prospect to receive value. It's so they can determine if they want to work with you. And it's so you can determine if you want to work with them. Okay. And I think that last part, number four, is, is a great thing to say. Like I like to say to prospects, uh, you know, I don't offer my coaching to everybody. I only offer it to people I feel like with every fiber of my being that I can help. Okay. And so that kind of takes some of the pressure off of the the prospect feeling like this is gonna be like some hardcore sales conversation. And in a moment, we're gonna actually go through the kind of the agenda or the flow of a consultation. But before we do that, any questions or any feedback on being clear about what a consultation is for yourself and also being open and clear about sharing that with anybody who might wanna have a consultation with you. First, any questions on that? And by the well, way, don't, you know, don't feel you guys, yeah, feel free to ask questions because you might be asking a question that somebody else who's listening later would have wanted to ask. So thank you. Susanna, yeah. Okay. Or she's there. Thank, thank you. Um, so this is a new career for me. Um, I did do a lot of sales in my earlier life, but in this particular career now that I'm embarking on in my first consultation I may get the question posed at me oh yeah and uh, do you have any references or testimonials just like you know if you were um, taking on you know like a, a, a plumber to do the work in your house you know you would say uh, you know you don't know how their work is so you know do they have anybody that can actually vouch for them so how do I get around the fact that I at this point in time I don't have somebody that's had a six month sort of um, experiential coaching with me. Awesome, great question. And it's Susanna, correct? Just make sure I it, get your name right, yeah, Susanna. Yeah, correct, yeah. correct. I, I think there are, you know, there, there might be others, but two things come to mind that you can do for that, Susanna. Number one, I, I always just love, and it sounds so silly, but pure unadulterated honesty. So Susanna, do you have anybody who I can call or do you have any testimonials or references? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. This is brand new for me. And I would love for you to be one of my first clients and my first testimonial. Like, Hi. how about that? Most That's people, lovely. yeah, most people are just asking kind of like to ask. It's almost like checking it off their box. Another thing you could do, Susanna, if that's not great for you, is just invite a few people to coach even for free. 
um, and, you know, on a limited time, maybe it's a month, maybe it's a two to three months and just say in exchange for working with me for free, because I'm going to really go for it and treat you like a, a, a paying client. The only thing I would ask at the end is for a testimonial if you, in fact, got value from my coaching. And then you'll have a few testimonials. Nobody needs to know that they were free or you invited those people to work with you. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you very much indeed yeah. for both those ideas. Great. Very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anybody else, any other questions or comments on this four part kind of definition for a consultation and being upfront with it with your prospects? All right, let's continue. And if questions come up as we go, feel free to ask. Okay, so we're gonna talk about a couple things prior to the consultation. Now, uh, this, uh, this, screen, this uh, PowerPoint is not gonna say this, but uh, one of the things I just wanna say verbally, if somebody says yes to a consultation with you, however you invite them, you want to uh, get that consultation scheduled as soon as you can. So for example, if you're at a networking event and it's in person and you meet somebody that might you think might benefit from your services and you wanna offer them a consultation, see if you can go ahead and schedule it right there on the spot, okay? Try the, the sooner you get it scheduled, that makes it more real. And the sooner you can deliver the consultation, it makes it that much more effective because it's it's they remember why they signed up for a consultation to begin with. The more time that goes by, the more the more special that becomes. Okay, and then when you when you secure a consultation, you just want to send a typically it's an email where you just uh, remind the person who you are. You share with them the meeting logistics, and then this is the key part. You ask them to prepare to at least think about some homework in advance of the consultation. And this is very important. I like to say, you don't, uh, here's some homework for you to ponder prior to our consultation. Feel free if you wanna send me your thoughts or answers. However, you don't need to, but this is what we'll be covering in the consultation. Okay. And you want to, and these, these questions are generic, but you'll want to customize them for your coaching business. But the three main questions are what is it you want? How will you feel when you get it? And how will you feel if you don't? Okay. So let's just say, for example, you're a leadership coach. Well, let's let's just use somebody specific here. Would anybody just like to share what kind of coaching you do? Just, just generally leadership coach or health and wellness or whatever. Leadership coach? Leadership coach. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So Julia, rather than, rather than just saying, what is it you want? What might you ask them? That is essentially asking that same question, but making it more specific to leadership. Well, my my potential client, right, Michael? So we're doing this. Yeah. That is correct. Yep. Absolutely. So I'm really targeting mid-professional career. Well, I mean, people in their mid-career who want to step up, who want to become a leader, right? Perfect. So for me, it's important to understand how they feel in their career now. What is okay. bothering them at the moment? What are the struggles and challenges? And where they would like to see themselves. Perfect. So that so that's an example of really, I think, all of the questions right there. So I, I would start with something like, you know, um, where where do you see yourself in a year from now? Or what does stepping up and being a great leader mean to you? Or, mm -hmm. you know, what are what are three characteristics of, of the leader you want to be? You see, they're all asking about leadership. Then it might be. Um, when you've achieved this or when you get to this level, can you, would you share the impact on you, the, your subordinates, your family, mm -hmm. et cetera? And then, and then lastly, if you were not to become that leader you envision and you were to remain where you are now, or I even sometimes like to say, or heaven forbid, go backwards, what impact is that going to have? Now, do you guys know why we're asking these questions? 
And in particular, how does it relate to coaching? And this is, this is the tie-in to why coaches really could and quote should make the best salespeople. Anybody want to emotions. share why? Yeah, go ahead. It's emotions, right? We are actually getting into the emotions, right? How would you like to feel instead? Because at the moment I feel not satisfied, stuck, struggle, oh, demotivated, oh my God, you know. And But you want to feel otherwise. You want to feel empowered. You want to be at work. You want to be a leader and not always feeling stuck. You want to be promoted, right? So it's all these. That's it. That, yeah. that is literally it, right? And don't, don't we all do that as a coach, right? We ask questions. We ask thought-provoking, powerful questions that get our clients to think and to feel and mostly to take action, right? That's what a coach helps our clients do. And so you're, you're being a good coach already in the homework before you've even had the session, okay? And would you, would you all agree that if you do a complimentary consultation with a prospect and, and, prospect and you get them talking, just like Julia said, about their goals, about their dreams, what impact it's going to have, how are they going to manage their team, what does that do for the bottom line? Or what if we? What if you don't? What are you struggling with now? How do your employees feel about you now? What happens if that gets worse? You're beginning to really leverage their desire to take action. And whether they hire you or not, isn't that a good gift to give them? Yes. That's why being a great salesperson, all you got to be is a coach. Okay? That's the key of the complimentary consultation. Any questions or comments as we before we dig into that a little bit deeper? Yeah. I what just is that? Is that you, Don? Yes. I just wanted to say, Michael, that obviously at this stage, you've already met or spoken in some way to the person. So as coaches, you're trained to listen out for the VHF. So if you know somebody is kinesthetic or you know they're visual or auditory, make sure you mirror the language because immediately that's building rapport and they're going to feel that you you get them already. There's not going to be that sort of juxta of position of thinking, oh, I don't know where I'm going to see myself because I'm not visual. And that could just spoil the rapport that you're trying to build. So think all the time about the coaching schools, uh, skills that you've got and what you can do to make it easy for your client to respond. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And it's so cool that you said that. Uh, I teach a course on, on speaking as a marketing strategy. And, the, and step two in the little process is uh, establish credibility. And I, as I define credibility not as your credentials, but letting your, you know, letting your people know that you understand them, that you get them. And that's exactly what you just said, Don. Like uh, helping them feel that and that and them knowing that you get them and using those words and being able to help them express those feelings are key. Good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna go back here. So you get you get them uh, prepared to do that homework. And then uh, the just one other thing prior to the consultation, it's it's seemingly so small. But you want to do your research. You want to learn about this person that you're going to be meeting with. That's the beauty about mostly LinkedIn now. You can pretty much find and learn about anybody. When I when I have people schedule a consultation with me, I also have them give me their website if they have one, so I can go learn about them. Uh, prepare your call sheet. That's just you know I, I'm a big note taker, so just be ready to take notes so you can use your notes. Uh, in order to serve them when and if they hire you, but also to make your offer, which I'll talk, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, Amy, my business partner, she she added this one, which I love. She actually creates a folder for that person as if they're already a client. So she she just creates their new client folder, which I think is cool. And then a, a good thing to do is just meditate. Uh, takes take your time. I like to really think about the prospect and I like to pray a little bit and just say, God, help me be a good steward for this person. 
uh, help me not be attached to whether they work with me or not, but that I give good service to them and help them in some way on this call and just kind of just really get centered and focused. Any questions on that? So here's a little, this is a, this is a little thumbnail about how a complimentary consultation might be structured. Okay, and we'll actually do, do a little role play in a moment. But you wanna take a moment to establish rapport. You want to review uh, the, the, the process, whether I say call here, whether you do these on the phone or Zoom or in person, but just share with them what they can expect, okay? You are going to spend most of your time discussing their homework. Asking those in questions, digging, you know, getting them to 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 share with you what they want, what they need, et cetera. Then, if they're a good, potentially a good fit, you're going to share your USM stands for your unique your unique service methodology. So that's just a little thumbnail of how you work with your clients. You're going to ask for the business. That's a biggie. A lot of coaches are afraid to do that, but hopefully by now you've set this up in such a way that it's very natural to ask for the business if they're a fit. You wanna answer their questions and you wanna quote, close the sale. Okay, I do a whole other presentation on handling objections, but we that's not for today. We're gonna to just assume today that people say yes and, and work with you and you don't need to, worry about objections, but even with the objections, there's ways to handle them. Uh, and they're all, you know, what you probably would imagine being ethical and dignified in the way you do that. Any questions to just get us started on what comes up for this structure, and then we'll do a little role play. Questions or comments? And let me ask this, since there's no questions or comments, let me ask for specifically, may I hear from two of you, just share a little bit about, is this helpful? Or do you know this already? Or just give me a little feedback on how we're doing and, and where, what if any changes you want me to make for the second half of the presentation? No, no, it's very new to me and um, it's interesting. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. It's no all, it's all new. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Anybody else? One more person. This is the thing, Michael. We have new members coming on every single day of every single month. Uh, and, you know, even though we've got a massive archive of all these masterclasses, people start where they start. Um, so, yep. uh, yeah, but there's plenty of material to help you, Sarah. Who else would like to make a comment? Susanna. Uh, you're on mute. Oh, you're on. Just unmute yourself, Susanna. Um, I think it's fantastic because what you've just shown us on the screen echoes what you've said the um, um, uh, talk was going to be about, that it seems very ethical. It seems a long way away from being um, cold calling sales. Yeah, that's exactly right. No, no cold calling. You want to be, you know, marketing. He, I, for those of you that didn't hear the marketing presentation, something I like to say that, that Susanna just reminded me of, think of marketing as your resume, okay? What is, the, what is the function, what is the goal when you create a resume? Why are you, why are you doing it, or a CV? Showcase your value, how That's you That's exactly right, it showcases your value, and so, so yes, and the purpose of creating a resume, sure, it's to showcase your value. Same with marketing. And the specific intention of a resume is to get an interview. Would you guys agree? Nobody, okay. nobody hires without doing an interview first. So the resume, typically when we're looking for a job, we use a resume, we send it in, and hopefully that garners the interview. Okay, marketing is like your resume. With, with a resume, you're wanting to get an interview. With your marketing, you want to get a complimentary consultation. So it's like you come up, kind of compartmentalize. To me, mentally, it's easier to get a consultation than it is to get a client. But if, but not, 
but when you do consultations, you'll get clients, right? So it's just kind of a kind of thinking first things first, and I think that helps. So let's just do a little, let's just do a little role play. We're certainly not going to do a whole consultation, but I just want you to hear a little bit of how it sounds. What I would like is somebody to just be a be a prospect for for the role play. So you're not gonna, you know, we're we're gonna shorten it, but just you don't have to be the coach or worry about, gee whiz, I just kind of learned this model. I'm too nervous to to do it on that end. I'll be the coach. Who would like to just play with me and be the prospect? Yeah, I will. Okay, thank you. Susanna, let me just drop that down. Susanna. Okay, so I'm gonna just pretend that. Um, oh well, well let's let's just keep it real. So Susanna, we're gonna pretend that Susanna, I did I'm, I did a presentation like I'm doing today. Susanna signed up for a consultation with me to see if I can help her grow her business, just like you guys would have your people sign up to help them with whatever you coach on. I'm gonna assume just for the moment that that I sent Susanna her homework and now we're on Zoom doing our consultation, okay? So this is, and what I'll do is I'll just, um, I'm gonna click over and share screen so you can kind of just see the, the shortened version of the process. So you're ready, Susanna? Yep. Okay, so I might say, hey, Susanna, how are you today? I'm just fine, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to have our consult uh, and I'll share with you kind of what to expect in a moment. But first, do you mind if I ask just whereabouts do you live and do you mind just sharing a little bit about yourself? Okay, yeah, um, one minute bio. I'm in Normandy at the moment and I'm able to work online. Uh, so I've got a new career going into coaching and I've decided to go into quite a new niche of uh, retirement coaching. Um, not quite sure where exactly on the stepping stones my clients might be, um, either planning it. Um, I'm very interested in longevity and so that links in. So basically I wanna partner with uh, like financial advisors and I'll be doing the non-financial piece that maybe clients are looking for. Good for you, Susanna. Just some, do you mind if I just give you some immediate feedback? Certainly. Yeah, so first I just wanna share, I love that you're specific about your, your niche, your target market and niche. You're very specific about wanting to work with folks on longevity. I also like that you're, you're already thinking marketing, like forming alliances with financial advisors. So. Despite that, your fact, the fact that this is brand new for you, you're already kind of on your way. So way to go. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, do you mind if I just share for a minute what to expect on our call together today? No, but I, I'm interested very much to have your expertise. Okay, cool. So basically, we're going to spend most of our time. And by the way, this will be about a 50 minute uh, Zoom call. But basically, we're going to spend a most of that time talking about the homework that I sent you. Did you, you don't have to share with me details now, but did you have a chance to think about those questions? Yes, I did. It's thought provoking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you said thought provoking because today I really would love to be kind of, kind of be your coach and give you value by digging deeper on what is it you want for your business? Um, how will, you know, your, your what, your why, kind of your values, what your vision is for your business. And then we'll also talk about kind of what would it what would it be like to get there? How much do you want it? What do you need to do to get there? And how, how awesome it would be uh, when you achieve it. And then also kind of on the negative side, I don't know that you're aware, but golly, I think it's only 35, 40% of coaches are still in business within five years. And the average income for a coach is only $43,000 a year. Not that that's horrible. However, I think you know coaches can do much better. So we'll, we'll kind of just really help you get off to a, a strong start. 
And then towards the end of the conversation, if you and I both think we might be a fit to work together, i.e. me helping you with your business, we can talk about my coaching. And if not, then at least you'll have value from the from the call today. Do you have any questions before we get started? No, that's very clear. Thank you. Cool. Okay, so tell me, why don't you just start by just sharing with me, what is your vision for your business? Right. And if um, you're not clear, uh, sorry to interrupt you, that's okay. You can just share that with me and or get through it the best you can. Just kind of want to get a sense for what your goals are. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not sure how much I, I want to just use talking um in my um consultations i i i your colleague earlier mentioned about you know maybe some people might have a difficulty with the word see i mean i like to use metaphors and i'd like to use nature so i would like to either bring nature onto the table or maybe we would go outdoors and somehow i'd have a harness with a with a pro cam or something on me if i can be um as technical as that, um, you know, the clients will vary. So goodness knows what will come up because um, when you're reaching a point in time where you're looking back over 40 years, say you're 60, started work at 20, and now you have the prospect of living healthy till you're 100, um, what's gonna come up for you? What, what's gonna, you know, what are we planning here? What, what, what would help you? Um, be your best and you know other obstacles that we need to have a chat about that maybe you know you haven't been able to share confidentially with anybody you tell me and you know I'll take it from there wow good for you okay so I'm going to just stop screen share for a minute so we're we're going to jump out of the role play what would you Susanna or anybody like to just share Kind of what do you what do you observe about that? What what kind of what was happening? There's no secret to it, but what was what's going on there? Um, talking about um I've worked with the elderly for 13 years. I've also worked in the care and industry myself since I was 14, which is about 42 years. So I know exactly where Suzanne's coming from. So that could be a niche in itself that I could not not necessarily take over what Suzanne's done, but it's nice that she's introduced that. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how how when we get our our potential clients talking and dreaming and sharing, right? We find that you know we're all of course unique. Of course we are, and we're all kind of in this crazy human experience, and so you find the similarities and you can really begin to see how you might help them. Now, if this were a, a real role play, I might dig a little deeper and say, wow, tell me, say more about the coaching and nature and, and using metaphors, right? Like we're not gonna do that here, but I would dig and get her, I might ask her, how much money do you wanna make? How big do you want your business, okay? Then I would get her, um, talking about why she wants this, the impact it's gonna have on her life. And then I would take about five minutes and also get her thinking about what if in a couple of years she's still struggling or still wonder, you know, there's a lot of people out there telling you what to do, what to do, what to do, what happens if you're still struggling with that? And then if I think there there's a, might be a fit between uh, me and Suzanne, I would just simply say, so, um, it sounds like we might have a fit here. Would you like to talk further about, about us potentially working together? And if so, I would just share a little bit about my, my service offerings and invite her to work with me. It's really, it can be really that simple, quote unquote. Doesn't mean that it's always easy. Doesn't mean there aren't variations, but that's a little bit of how it works. Any questions or comments on that? Tell you what I'm you nervous about. Say that is, again, Susanna. I, I, there's just one, well, there's many things, but in particular, maybe you could address this now with me. Um, as far as coaching goes, I can sort of map that as to the many 
questions I can ask, but I am apprehensive what I might do down the road if the client brings up too much trauma. I, I, I want to keep them still for coaching about their life because obviously life is like a jigsaw, but maybe that piece of the trauma that might not be within my scope of um, you know, expertise. Yeah, I would if 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 you so is your question like whether to bring that up or not or or express that concern? Yeah, I I I mean everybody has it. I don't want to like put my client off at the beginning, but and um, maybe I I shouldn't mention it, but uh, you know I, I'm I'm when when we talk about clients having anxieties or problems, there's there's a limit to to what I really mean by that. Yeah, so so this is how I would handle that. If uh, just, of course, I don't know you, and I'm kind of making assumptions. But if during the consultation you think that that trauma might impact your work together, and you would want to bring that notion up now, then I would. If not, I would just have that in your agreement, in your coaching agreement, when somebody oh. does become a client, and talk to them about that like in their orientation or their first session. That's a good idea just to put it in an agreement because they'll having, they will be getting an agreement. So that's a very good yes. idea. Yeah. You're welcome. Hey Dawn, I just should check in. Is our, do we have 45 minutes total with the Q and A or 40 no. or an hour? An hour in total, Michael. Okay. So we've got, we have more time because we're doing the questions as we go. Yeah. Any, uh, any other questions or comments on this thus far? Now, Matt, I, it's hard to look at the chat too while we're going, but if anybody is- I'm checking it for you, Michael. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So I'm just backing up things that you've said. I will let you know if there are any questions. We're a very vocal group, so I'm sure you're going to get them as they arise. So nothing, nothing I need to be aware of. So no. All righty. Um, The critical success factors of the consultation, just to kind of reiterate the most important things here, uh, warm and it's where we want to be warm and friendly, but it's not a social call. The reason I bring that up is I think uh, in general, people, we coaches in particular, we're, you know, we're a little nervous about the sales and we might not be as confident as we want to be. So we handle the consultation a little bit more like a social call. You know, you want to be warm and friendly, but this is a professional call to see if you're a fit to work with this person. Uh, be careful not to get lackadaisical or take the take these for granted. I speak from experience. I've probably done. I, I should I should know like hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds of consultations, and there was a period where. I, I like didn't do any preparation. I'd be like, oh, I have a consultation in one minute. Boom, answer the phone and be on a consultation with somebody. And A, of course, those people didn't become clients. And B, I felt like a jerk. Like, what are you, you're not taking this serious, man. You're just because you're so used to these doesn't mean that these folks are. You got to hunker down and really take these seriously. So just wanted to make that point. Um, I call, I say crisp, tight, and professional, stick to timelines. The reason I have that there, don't, don't get me wrong, a consultation need not be exactly 45 or 50 minutes. They might go to as much as an hour. However, what I found and what I found with the hundreds of clients I've worked with is if your consultations are taking more than an hour, you're, you're not, you're what happens is I, I'm going to just come off screen share here so I can just kind of look in your eyes. The conversation has gotten too soft. You're kind of, if it takes that long, you're, you're trying to give too much value because you're not feeling confident and or you've let it become more social and you're really kind of getting off almost on making a new friend. And those people will not become clients. It's crazy how I've actually paid attention to, because I get in that too. Sometimes I'll be just loving having a consultation and we're talking and we're strategizing. And it's almost like a, it shifted from the consult to their actual first session. 
And the next thing I know, I look at my clock, it's an hour and a half later, they don't even end up becoming clients. It's almost like a subliminal thing, like it was too too friendly and not, not uh, professional enough. So just wanted to have you be careful of that. Um, I, I say avoid proposals whenever possible. I The more a, a prospect should become a client on the first consultation, if not the second. You shouldn't have to be sending proposals to prospects. Unless you're working in a corporate environment, that's different and proposals might be necessary. But if you're coaching people one-on-one, -on -one, uh, not through a corporation, typically proposals are not necessary. That's why I say close on this call. And I always say too, they're a client when they pay. Uh, a, pro a prospect is not a client till they pay. I know that sounds kind of kind of American, black and white, hardcore. And I can't tell you how many times I or somebody has said, yeah, I got a new client this week. And I'll say to my clients, really? Tell, tell me about he or she. And um, what, you know, what package did they invest in? Oh, well, they, they haven't yet, but, but she's there. She's going to be in for sure. Not a client yet. They're not a client until they sign on the dotted line and pay. And all kinds of things can go wacky between the time they say they're going to be a client and the time they actually become a client. So make that happen when somebody expresses that interest. Any questions or comments on any of those critical success factors? Can I add an in, in a tip, please, Michael? Could you say that again? Could I add in a tip here that Please, I've, thank uh, you. Absolutely. I've learned from other coaches who have done masterclasses? And that is if you record these sessions, then in the event that uh, a week goes by, and as you said, Michael, something happens in that wacky time that they don't actually pay their invoice or they hesitate or they come up with other objections, you can send them the recording to say, I'm just sending you this recording to remind you of what we discussed, how enthusiastic you were. And then you can ask them what's happened since we spoke last week because you were so on it in those sorts of words. Um, that's, but it, that's it's phenomenal. a great reminder. That's phenomenal. Not, not only sending the video uh, or the audio, whatever it is, which I love, and just the fact of that you said, you know, kind of, I wanted to remind you of how excited you are and, and what happened. Like the fact that you have that kind of confidence and wherewithal to ask that quote, tough question. When you can get to that point, you're, you're on it, you guys. A lot of people are afraid to do that and you owe it to these people to follow up. Mm. Yay, good stuff. Okay, so uh, so when they become a client, so you, let's say you do a consultation or a follow-up, you know, when somebody says, great, Mike, I want to do this, I say, excellent, there's just two things we need to do before we wrap up today. One, let's go ahead and schedule our coaching times. And number two, uh, we'll go ahead and set up payment. And uh, I'll, I'll typically say, why don't we just start with the coaching times? And, you know, hey, how are two, you know, I do my coaching, I do my coaching like same time every two weeks. So you set that up and say, okay, regarding payment, you know, do you want to do monthly? I'll go ahead and take your debit or credit card now or, or, bank, or bank account and we'll process your payment either monthly or a one-time payment, which would you prefer? Boom, just kind of matter of fact. A lot of people are afraid to ask for a debit or credit card. I personally don't, I don't like checks. No sense in having to wait, check the mail, just handle it all right there on the spot. If somebody says, oh, I feel funny giving you my card. I usually say, I totally get that. Um, I process it right after we hang up. I rip, rip the, the paper up that I wrote it on, I do that. However, if you'd like me to go into my processing center right here, take your card and just go ahead and handle it while we're here, I'm happy to do that. And then I don't have any record of your number. Mm. I think that's one of the beauties of Zoom, Michael, uh, because you've got that chat box 
Um, yep. And so you can say in the chat box, just put your address in how you'd like your PayPal invoice um, laid out. You can pay by Visa, by Bax, by PayPal. If you don't have a, a PayPal account, it doesn't matter. Uh, so it's just fait accompli as part of the conversation. They put their address in. When would you like this to be raised? For for how, you know, what sort of incremental payment starting when? And it's just a Phenomenal. conversation. Just part of the conversation, right? Love it. Beautiful. Nice. All right. Um, if they don't become a client or if they say, you know, let me think about it, or I got to talk to my spouse, what you want to do is schedule your follow up right there. You know, OK, uh, so is it is a couple days good? Let's go ahead and schedule a follow up for Wednesday as an example. And then what I love to do, Don, you said, by the way, Don, I called you Julie earlier because I. Your name was Julie on the thing. And I thought I, I read your name. <laughs> but I, in my mind, I think subconsciously, I'm like, she, I could have sworn that's Dawn. So anyway, thank you for, <laughs> it's been so long since we talked. Um, I know. Where, where was I? Uh, go ahead follow and schedule up. the follow up. And then you can either send the audio or the video. I d I've never done that, though. I think it's a great idea. But what I'll do is I'll take 15 minutes and I'll just go through my notes and I'll just say, you know, I look forward to our follow up session on Wednesday. In the meantime, this is what I understood were the key points of what you're looking for in your coaching and your goals. And that's a, just a nice way to remind them what they say they wanted. And then I'll put, you know, Sarah, I feel very confident that I can help you just a reminder, I don't offer my coaching to everybody, um, only those that I really feel like we'd have a good connection and we'd have fun working together and I feel like I could help. So I look forward to talking to you on Wednesday. That's kind of it. And then if they say no and they don't become a client, then just ask them if I ask them, can I keep you, can I put you on my e-newsletter list? I do a weekly e-zine just so I can continue to give value and when and if you change your mind or you think I might be able to serve you, you can let me know. And then usually they say yes to that. Questions or comments I, on that? I think there's a perhaps a step that we could build in in between those two things, Michael, um, which is while they're thinking about it. So we've sent the email before we say there are no and can we add you to our database? What is it that you need to help you make an informed decision that we've not discussed yet? Very good, Don. And that's kind of a, that's a little prelude, if you will, to the kind of the managing of objections. So yes, I would, wherever you do that, I would do that in the call. So when somebody says, you know, can I, can I have some time to think about it? I, uh, I, I always, the first, the first, way to handle a an objection a literal objection or a question is to ask permission to ask a question so if somebody said yeah mike i think i want to do this but um do you mind if i take a couple days to think about it i never just say yeah sure i say i say absolutely don and do you mind if i ask a question or two right yeah. so do you mind sharing what you need to think about and then I'll say, and I don't mean that because I'm trying to get you to answer now, or I'm sorry, to say yes now, but just kind of asking for learning for me and to see what your thoughts are. Mm -hmm. Or like Don said, how did you word it, Don? Is there anything anything that we need to clear? I yeah. can share with what you. Else? Help you. What else do you need to help you make that informed decision for when you discuss it with your partner or whatever? Perfect. Um so, it, it, I mean, we just need to have you on a regular basis, Michael, to cover all these things. I know, uh, there's so much. A, a complete series, which is what Biz Life 360 is about. So perhaps after this call, if you've got time, if not, we'll do it in another time. But I want to book you for a, a proper series and a, a proper training session so that as many members of the, uh, the, the community can benefit as possible. Because uh, these are wonderful bite-sized chunks. And that's what they're meant to be. Content-rich masterclasses leaving us wanting more. So you're doing a great that's, job. Yeah. And that's what I thought. That's why, like, this yeah. is just boom, 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 boom. Exactly. So let me, let me just share for those of you that want to stay connected. 
if if you want to get on my e-newsletter list, which is uh, every Thursday, I send out a, I call it a pithy marketing training. I keep it to 200 words or less. And it's just literal, like a little tiny written micro, micro training on growing your business. And then as Don said, one of the things I'm doing now big time is starting your bucket list life, a whole new business. And so it's kind of my goal to, <laughs> this is fun, this, talk about being authentic. It's my goal to fund the launch of that business uh, with my current business. So yeah. I'm just doing this massive sale. If you do even think about wanting to work with me or take any of my programs, we've got you know audios, videos, not everything is just coaching, VIP days. Uh, I'm just slashing, making my prices 25, 50% off generate some revenue, use that to launch your bucket list life and everybody's a winner. So don't hesitate. And you know what, Michael? I think you could be a possible joint venture partner for Suzanne because retired people want to create their bucket list. So I yeah. think you encourage Susanna in the, the messages to say, it's not just financial people, it's holistic practitioners, it's exciting people like Michael, you know, doing bucket lists. These are great people for you to share uh, events and you know what I call um, half the workload but double the fun you know over an event perhaps so just a thought for you Susanna you got it I love that and you got you got the vision of your bucket list life already see Europeans you guys kind of live the bucket list life travel America that's I love America and we're so kind of off on our own like Americans travel and pursue bucket list items so much less so than uh, than Europeans. So anyway, somebody asked for my well, email. I just popped yes. it in the chat. Yeah, thank you. We've come to thank that you, time Don. where we've not got very, very long left. But I just want to say thank you, Michael. Uh, very ethical. And I think you've captured the essence of this masterclass that the... Um, discovery call, the consultation, the prelude to coaching is very dignified. So thank you for that. Before we leave, as always, we have 60 seconds CPD, because if you don't take action right now on what you've learned in this last hour, you're not going to remember it at the end of the week when you fill out your CPD log. So CPD logs, if you haven't got one, they're complimentary download on the IAPCM website. But I'm going to give you 60 seconds now, quiet time, to either put in your chat box if you want to share it or on your log what you've got out of today in terms of what you're going to do differently. Thank you. Can I just um, ask um, something? Um, my work um, won't allow me to come to the masterclasses all the time. Um, can I just catch up online? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, 60 minutes over. So, um, Yes, Sarah, uh, all the masterclasses on the blog. So you can, yeah. you know, peruse them as, as and when you want. Uh, you can get, you will get the monthly summary, which tells you what you missed this week, uh, this month. Um, and you can go into the secure members archive by category, marketing, coaching tools, sales, whatever, whatever. And you can just work your way through the archive. So you'll, there's no need to ever miss anything. Anybody- And you're on YouTube. And you're on YouTube as well. I like that. You put yes. all the master classes and all the author's reviews on YouTube. So I always, when I miss, I'm always on YouTube as well. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for that. So anybody want to share anything with Michael before we let him go? I know he's very busy running his- enterprise to set up his new enterprise but uh any final questions 
Thank you, Michael. No, thank You're you, Michael. Thank My you. pleasure. That was fun. Thank Thanks you. for having me, Don. You're very welcome. It's always a pleasure to see you, and uh, we'll set up something again uh, for Perfect. us to have a, a smoothie or a coffee on Zoom and, and plan the future. Love it. Have a good Bye. one, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Take care. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.